Daniel Skinner. Final question. Why do Netflix movies suck big time? Looking at you, Heart of Stone. I, I wouldn't say it sucks big time. It's just so epically mid. Epically mediocre. That That's to say, we think of a movie that just sucks big time. I'm talking about a movie that's just like overtly incompetent. That like there's movies that you can't the plot doesn't make sense, you can't follow what's happening, the the action is filmed in a way where you can't see what's what's going on, it's just cut to pieces. There's movies that are just unbelievably incompetently made or just n don't have the production value to pull off what they're trying to pull off to, to, to do. Heart of Stone isn't that it doesn't suck big time. They spent a ton of money. To make a very slick version of a totally forgettable, mediocre script. That's what they keep doing. And that's what I think is even more confusing about them. It's that they, they're they throwing money in movie stars. Just throwing money at very middle-of-the-road, okay, generic scripts. And there's so many of the movies that fall into this category, Red Notice and The Gray Man, where it it you're paying attention to it because of the movie star. Huge budget, so there's all sorts of exotic locations, big gigantic action set pieces, but there's just nothing to make an impact. There's nothing memorable about the script. And I'm not sure exactly what that is, if some of it's just built into the fact that um, the better scripts, the ones that are like, well, that's really good. That, that'll that make an impact. They go, okay, well, let's put those in a theater. The big studios are snatching those ones up. And it, you know, it takes, like movie stars can star in two, three movies in a year. So they can do their Netflix movie. Netflix wants to pay me $20 million and sell the movie entirely on my face. Cool, I'll go do that. And then I'll go do my theatrical movie over here. But you can do multiple of those. But like directors, you can't do, you can't crank out three movies from a director in a year that's making movies at that scale and size. So I wonder if some of it's that, that it's just, it's such a mass product thing of, we don't need to make a movie that convinces someone to leave their house, drive across town and pay $10 for a ticket and $20 for a drink and popcorn. Or if it's family, we're paying $50 for tickets, $50 for popcorn and drinks. We don't have to do that. We just have to put, take a genre that's fun with a movie star that people like and they go, oh, look, Gal Gadot's in a spy movie. Cool. And you click on it. And it's entertaining enough while you're on your couch that you're not going to click away. You didn't spend money or you didn't leave in your house. You're just right there. They're enjoyable enough as just kind of like a throw it on movie. And it's almost the model. So they're designing movies that only need to be interesting enough to get people to click while they're on their couch. That's what they are. They're, they're, most of them are just that. Um, and they're competent enough, they're slick enough, while being entirely forgettable. They're throwing big piles of money at totally generic scripts. Why? I'm, I, 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 my guess, best guess is just the best stuff flows elsewhere. Just the industry's in a really weird spot right now. Most of these clips are pulled from my weekly Patreon live stream. Join at any level and you can join the chat and ask all the questions you want. That's for as little as $2 per month. For $5 per month, you can get your name on my end card. For $25 per month, you can have a monthly video chat with me. Link is in the description for more details and keep talking movies and TV too much.